Welcome to Valley Forge Baptist Temple. It is Christmas time at Valley Forge Baptist. We have everything decorated beautifully. We're singing about the Lord. We're giving praise to God. In the midst of it all, we can join the angels and the shepherds and announce the good news that Jesus Christ has come. He has come to save us from our sins. And that puts joy in our heart, and we shout it from the housetop. So glad to have you here today. God has been at work all month long. Uh, we praise God for what he has been doing even in the last day, and we're praising him for that. So let's join together in prayer and ask him to speak to our hearts on this Sunday before Christmas. Father, we praise you. We praise you for that first Christmas. We praise you for this Christmas, and we're grateful to come into your house today to worship uh, that baby that is the King of Kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. He is the Savior of the world. And Father, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts Fill our hearts with love and gratitude for all that you've done for us. And may that overflow as we share your love to others. I pray today that whatever the spiritual needs are upon the hearts of your people, you'd meet those needs. Draw us close to your heart. Father, I pray for those that are in times of sickness and recovery and grieving. Uh, give them your grace. You are the God of all comfort. And may you touch them and lead them. And may you meet their needs at this time. Lord, now we pray that if there be one that comes to this place on this day or on Christmas Eve that doesn't know you as Savior, may they understand the real reason we celebrate this season. And may they sense that conviction and drawing by your Holy Spirit and come to you to be born again into the family of God. Now, Father, may you be glorified as we worship your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to give you one of our welcome booklets. Just raise your hand high for just a moment as the rushers come by. We'd like to pass the welcome booklet. You can take that, and if you would, uh, go ahead and uh, fill that card out, and you can drop that into the offering plate in just a few moments.
Amen. Thank you, choir, for that song this morning. Would you stand as we continue to sing page number 138, O Come All Ye Faithful, Joyful and Triumphant. We'll sing all three verses together this morning, 138. O come, all ye faithful, joyful. you find your seats there, we'll continue to sing in just a moment. If you have not received a copy of Pastor's Notes for this morning's message, make sure you raise your hand at this time. The ushers are coming by and they'll get a copy of that to you if you need that this morning. Let's go ahead and continue to sing. God rest you merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. We'll sing two verses as we continue. God rest you merry Page number 140 in your hymn books. It came upon a midnight clear, 
Let's sing the first and the last as we continue this morning. with us. Emmanuel literally means God with us. Let's just sing this together twice before we finish today. Emmanuel. He Emmanuel, God with us. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It was predicted by the prophet Isaiah. Jesus Christ fulfilled that when He came. It is amazing and overwhelming to think that God would become a man. Well, God truly blessed uh, yesterday in the midst of uh, all kinds of uh, activities happening. We had a homegoing service uh, for Roger Grambling yesterday. Uh, Vi is here today with her father from California, and uh, he, uh, uh, he, he was in cold weather in California, and he brought it with us, uh, with him. So we're so glad that he could be out. But God blessed in a wonderful way of giving comfort and grace, and then to be able to see someone come to know the Lord as their Savior in that uh, service yesterday. And then last night was the Varner's uh, live nativity uh, with the animals and the wise men and Mary and Joseph and the baby. And, and uh, Pastor Joyner assured me, he says, hey, it's in the barn. Uh, I said, well, it's going to be cold. He said, it's in the barn. I said, if Jesus can be born in a barn, then I can preach a gospel in the barn. Overflow, we went outside, and so it was cold, but there was uh, more than 100 folks there, and, and uh, the Lord bless, we'll show you a couple pictures tonight about that, but we had, I saw at least one uh, be able to respond uh, for salvation, so God was at work uh, in a great way, a uh, great way yesterday. I'd like to ask our ushers to come at this time, uh, where we see our tithes and offerings, our missions giving. It is our Christmas Sunday, so either today or next week, if you'd like to be able to give a Christmas offering, a Christmas offering will go to be able to uh, help everything in the work of God, both here and with our missionaries as well. Good to have Rick Agledinger here today. Rick, uh, recovering from major back surgery, and so welcome back to church. And so it's been a, a number of weeks in recovery, but we rejoice that was successful, and glad to have you back. You've been missed, and so welcome back. I'd like to ask Brother Peter Roth, he'd ask a blessing upon our Christmas offering today.
Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful indeed for this, this time of year. Father, we remember the greatest gift of all, the gift of the Lord Jesus, the babe born in Bethlehem. Father, we know that <clears throat> you alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy of our worship, and we give you glory and worship, recognizing you're the Lord of lords and King of kings. And Father, we just thank you again for that unspeakable gift of the Lord Jesus who was born to die that we might live. And we pray that uh, if there's any here this morning that have not, have not accepted the free gift of salvation, that today would be the day that they would accept the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We thank you for this year that you've given us of ministry here at Valley Forge Baptist Temple, all the blessings and all those that have been saved and discipled and baptized. And, and Father, we just thank you and praise you that the word has gone forth from here around the world through our missions program. We would ask now your blessing upon this offering that those that give that back a portion of what you so richly blessed us with, that it would be used to further the gospel even going into 2016. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for that song today. When you think about Christmas, you think about a baby in Bethlehem, but truly he is the king of kings. Every time the first coming is mentioned in the Bible, the second coming is mentioned eight times. God wants us to know that Jesus Christ is going to come again, and he will come as king of kings and lord of lords. If you have a Bible with you, please open today to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 this morning, 2 Corinthians Chapter 9, my message is entitled, The Unspeakable Gift. And for little children, one of the most exciting things about Christmas is opening 
gifts on Christmas Day. Even most of the adults here have a memory or two of receiving a special gift on Christmas morning, a bike, a doll, a game, or a special toy. But some of you also have a disappointing memory. You may have had an extremely high expectation as a child for a particular Christmas gift, but did not receive it. I'm sorry you don't like my Christmas gift, the aunt said to her nephew, but I asked you if you preferred large checks or small checks. He replied, I know, Aunt Debbie, but I didn't think you meant necktie patterns. <laughs> Disappointment. It can happen. I mean, even on Christmas morning. But I promise you, there is one gift that you will never be disappointed in. It is God's gift. It is the unspeakable gift. And this week, we celebrate God's gift to us, Jesus Christ. Here in 2 Corinthians 9, the Apostle Paul is he's asking the church in Corinth to, to finish taking up a collection, an offering for the Christians in Jerusalem. The Jewish Christians were, were suffering in deep poverty at this time because of a famine back in Israel. In 1 Corinthians 16, he reminded the Corinthian Christians that since they had received spiritual blessings from the Jerusalem church, it was only right that they share in financial blessings with them in their time of, of a deep need. And Paul had asked them to give a financial gift, a one-time special gift. And they had responded eagerly to his appeal, but they have delayed. They promised. Now they needed to deliver on that promise. It reminds me of a story of a lady who was so busy during the holidays in a rush. In the last minute, she, she uh, uh, picked up a box of 50 identical greeting cards, and without bothering to read the verse, she hastily signed them and addressed them all but one, and uh, she sent them out. Three days later, after having mailed 49 of these cards, she came across the one card that she hadn't sent. And she looked at the card and, and uh, that she had sent to all of her family and friends, and she was horrified to read, this card is just to say a little gift is on the way. <laughs> and that, that's something like the Corinthians. They had, they had responded so eagerly, we're going to give. We're going to give to them. Uh, they responded to Paul's request. But in fact, in verse 2, he wrote, he wrote in this chapter, he said, I've told other churches about your response and your, your, uh, your promise of a gift is a great example to others uh, that are giving. May God bless you for your promise to give. And then down in verse 14, Paul says that you have the prayers of the poor Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem. They're praying for you. And now Paul gives this wonderful closing to this chapter. We call it a doxology. The closing, the doxology is a short hymn of praise with just eight words. Paul sums up how he feels about another gift, God's great gift to us. Would you please stand with me as I read a very short but very powerful message Paul gave to the Corinthians from his heart, and he, he gives it to us as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and in verse 15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Would you say that with me today? Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Ah, oh, one more time. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You know, gratitude is a really big deal to God, and it should be a really big deal to us. And so we're going to come now into God's presence, and let's thank him. Our Father, we are truly grateful to you. We're grateful to you for who you are. We're grateful to you for what you have done for us. We're grateful to you for the unspeakable gift, this incredible gift of our Savior and our salvation. Father, I pray that as we go through the Christmas season, as we see family and friends, as we come together to worship on these special occasions again tonight and Christmas Eve, may our hearts overflow with this gratitude 
for what you have done for us. May we share that good news with others who are yet in darkness, lost in their sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Wow. You know that only saved people can truly say that. Only saved people that have the gift can say, thank you, God, for this unspeakable gift. Paul says, I just want to give thanks to God both now and forever. Uh, the context here is it's about a financial gift to help believers in need, and, and he just bounces from that to this great gift of God. And you say, Paul, what, what are you giving thanks for? And he says, I'm going to thank God. I'm going to thank him now. I'm going to thank him in the future. I'm going to thank him forever for his unspeakable gift. What does that mean? Unspeakable means inexpressible, indescribable, tremendous. It is beyond words. What is the unspeakable gift? Well, it's not a thing. It's a person. Who is the unspeakable gift? The unspeakable gift is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of God. It is his birth and life and ministry and death and resurrection. It is his eventual return uh, to the earth. And for Paul and for us, the, the thought of God the Father giving his Son as a gift to mankind is astounding. That God would save Jews and Gentiles in the first century was amazing. Paul saw the gospel breaking down the racial barriers between Jew and Gentile, the cultural burials between men and women, uh, rich and poor, slave and free. And now 2,000 years later, the gospel has, it has circled the globe. And wherever it goes, it continues to change lives, including right here in our very own church family, with you and with me. On page two of your notes, you see that, that we must just say, what a gift. What? What a gift. The gift of salvation. It is a gift that transforms lives. I mean, the, the mean become kind. The prejudice become loving. The bitter become sweet. The sinners become forgiven. The addicted become free. The hopeless become fearless. The lazy become productive. The gossipers become peacemakers. The worried become peaceful. And the lost become saved. And I got to see this firsthand when I was only 15 years old. I was an unsaved teenager, just kind of doing my own thing. And, and I was in a home that was, that was in distress. And I saw that gift of God, come to my dad and save him and change him. He was 50 years old, and life was hard. And he came home, and he asked my mom to forgive him. He asked me to forgive him. And when my brother got back from college and your college, he asked him to forgive him for that, that, that whole lifestyle of alcohol addiction and yesterday, he turned 90. <laughs> he turned 90. God gave him 40 more years, at least plus a day. 40 years. And what he was is not what he is because he received a gift. He received God's gift, and it changed him on the inside. God did what AA could not do. Uh, God did for my mom what Al-Anon could not do. Uh, this is the power of God. This is this unspeakable, this is this amazing gift. And when you, when you receive the gift, you are transformed by the touch of God. You become like the gift. You take on the characteristics of the gift. You become Christ-like. You become holy. There's a change that occurs. Your words are loving. Your character is holy. Your attitude is positive. Your actions become like the Savior who now rules and reigns in your heart. And once you receive the unspeakable gift, you'll never be the same. What, what a gift. Let me 
tell you about two men I met this week that received this gift. Uh, these two men came down from New Jersey. On Wednesday, I, I met Evangelist Segundo Rodriguez. He's the man on the left, and Pastor Hermes Arazeri from New Jersey. He's the man on the right. And Pastor Segundo, he, uh, he speaks no English, and so Pastor Hermes came along as the interpreter. And uh, Pastor Joyner and I took them out to... Uh, I said, where do you want to go? You want to go, you want to go Spanish, you want to go Mexican, you want to go Italian, you want to go Asian, and we went Italian. And so we took him to Olive Garden there, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Segundo, uh, he, was, he was witnessed to by Stan Templeton there in Peru. And he was involved in helping build the church building. He was a single man, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Templeton, Missionary Templeton, presented the gospel. And you know what he said? He said, that's enough. That's enough. I've... I've uh, if you talk to me anymore, you will push me away. Stop. And so he did. And he continued on in his drinking lifestyle. And he was actually uh, 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 working on the next project from the uh, church or seminary building to Pastor Templeton's house. And he said he woke up in the middle of the night from a, a drunken stupor. And he said, I didn't know if I was dead or not. And he said, I realize I'm still alive, and this is not the way I want to live. And so, working on Brother Templeton's house, he was actually working in the bathroom. Got a hold of Brother Templeton, and he said, I knew what to do, but I talked with him and I prayed, and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He says, I've been born again. He's got a couple of children, married a Christian wife, and now he is the evangelist for the church and the seminary. And he said, I just had to come to say thank you to Valley Forge Baptist Temple. He said, there is one ministry that stands behind the missionary outreach of our church and seminary. He said, it's your church. And I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to report to you that, that hundreds of ministries are being touched. I think they have 800 graduates out, most of them serving in, in uh, some type of full-time or vocational ministry. And he said, thank you. Thank you. So I pass along his thanks because he received the gift. He's sharing it with, the, with others. The other man, Pastor Hermes, uh, so we began to, to speak to him, and, and uh, we have a picture of his, his family here. And he was born in Puerto Rico. In fact, he knows our missionary, Gary Bell, uh, who was there you know, some 40 years ago in Hiuya, up in the mountains. He said, I want you to know the church is still going wonderfully there in Hiuya. And at, when Pastor Hermes was 10, he came to New Jersey. And he went off to the Midwest to become an engineer. And while he was in engineering school, uh, someone shared the gift with him. And he became born again. And he, he left his pursuit of an engineering degree and went to, to Maranatha Baptist Bible College and came there to New Jersey, worked with Clarence Sexton at Madison Avenue Baptist Church. And now he has Bible Baptist Church of Patterson. And he said, I've got two boys that we have adopted. We adopted both of them uh, within the first week of their life. And the young man on the right, he said, I want you to know my oldest son he said, we adopted him from Chicago, and his mom was going to abort him. Teenage pregnant mom out of wedlock. And you know what happened? Someone gave her a tract. And she got the tract, and she read it, and she said, this is what I need. And she received Jesus Christ as her Savior, and the Holy Spirit told her, this is wrong to be able to murder your baby. And so she contacted uh, one of the uh, Genesis Pregnancy Crisis Organizations, gave her baby up for adoption, and Pastor Hermes and his wife, who could not have kids, adopted him. And now he's, uh, uh, he's already graduated, and he works in a crisis intervention counseling center, and he is helping others. What am I saying? I'm saying when you receive the gift, you become like the gift, you take on the characteristics of the gift. You become, you become Christ-like. You become holy. Gift-giving at Christmas is not a tradition that began one or 200 years ago. It goes way back. It goes all the way back to the first Christmas. 
It goes back 2,000 years when the wise men brought gifts to the baby Jesus in Bethlehem, Matthew 2, 11, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They opened their treasures. Most likely, the wise men had brought their gifts in treasure boxes, ancient Christmas boxes, the kind you get down at Walmart. Uh, okay, not, not that kind. <laughs> the kind more something like this a box that would be fit to present a present to the king of kings. Bringing gifts was especially important in the ancient East when you were to approach a superior. What do these gifts represent? There in your notes, you're familiar with this. Gold suggests the royalty of the birth of the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the king, the king of the Jews. And frankincense was a glittering aromatic resin or gum obtained by cutting the bark of the Bosuela trees, and the frankincense speaks of his deity. Emmanuel, God with us, God becoming man. And then myrrh came from a tree found in Arabia and a few other places and was a much valued spice and perfume. The myrrh was used in the burial clothes and suggests the coming cross and burial, burial of Christ showing us his humanity. Gold for royalty, frankincense for deity, myrrh for humanity. These gifts were expensive. These gifts were uncommon presents. They probably helped finance Jesus' family for the two years in Egypt when they fled from King Herod, thus fulfilling the prophecy, out of Egypt have I called my son. Just as baby Jesus and Joseph and Mary received the gifts on the first Christmas, so God has planned a Christmas gift for you and for me. On page three, we see that God offers the most wonderful gift you will ever be given. It is God's gift to you. Nothing compares to it. It is the gift of salvation. It is the gift of forgiveness. It is the gift of heaven. And this week, many of us will open gifts. Some gifts we love. Some, not so much. Uh, but we should be thankful for each gift because it is the thought behind the gift that counts. Some gifts may be impersonal. Some of them may be impractical. Uh, you just can't really use them. Some are going to wear out. Some are going to break before the day is over. Some might be inexpensive. You might get a gift like this, a tie that plays music at all the wrong times, all right? You know? <laughs> but a close relative gave it to me. That means either my wife, my kids, or my mom, all right? And so you, you, you take the gift and you say, thank you. And she picked it out for me to wear today. How many heard it playing earlier in the service? Yeah, I, I was trying to cover that up. Good ears all the way back there, <laughs> Luke. All right. And so here we go. Uh, we have these different gifts that we get, uh, but none of those adjectives describe God's gift to you. In the first place, I want you to see that God's gift is personal. It is personal. It is custom made for you. Listen to what the angel said. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The angel said it, it's personal. The angel said it's made just for you. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. And that's the only way we can be forgiven. This gift is also practical. It is practical. This is the most practical gift you'll ever get. You need this gift that God has to offer you. It's very practical for your everyday life. His gift will bring forgiveness. His gift will bring rest to your soul. We're talking about peace, joy, satisfaction, power for living. It is personal. It is practical. And then I want you to notice that God's gift is priceless. It is priceless. Jesus Christ paid for your salvation with his very life. That's how much it costs to pay for this gift. It is the most priceless gift in the entire universe. And then lastly, God's gift is permanent. It will last forever throughout eternity. There's not another gift on earth that is as permanent as his unspeakable gift to you. You can never lose your salvation. Now, where are you going to get a gift like that? Nowhere except from God. 
I mean, if I said that, that, that I have a gift that will solve all of your biggest problems, heal all of your deepest hurts, forgive every single mistake you've ever made, cleanse your conscience of every sin you've ever committed, help you understand the purpose you were put on earth for, make you a better person, fill your life with confidence and joy and peace, and eternally secure your future in heaven, would you be interested in a gift like that? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's the greatest gift that can ever be given and received. So let me ask you a very personal question. How many more Christmases are you going to go through before you finally accept God's gift to you? You celebrate this holiday, this event, year after year without unwrapping the biggest gift that is under the tree, God's gift to you, an, opened, an unopened wonderful gift is a worthless gift. Now's the time. Don't let another Christmas go by without accepting and wrapping God's gift to you. When you really understand how marvelous God's gift of his love through his son Jesus Christ is to you, there is only one logical, only one sane response. You accept it. Augustus Caesar gave a priceless gift to a friend a princely gift. The friend responded with, I, I'm not worthy to receive this gift. And Caesar said, you're right. You're not worthy to receive the gift, but I am worthy enough to give it. And so it is with you and me. This Christmas, we all must say, Lord, we are not worthy to receive such a priceless gift and a precious gift from you. But the Lord responds, you are right but I am worthy enough to give it to you. So how do you receive the gift? The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You say from your heart, Jesus is my Lord. Now, what does it mean to make Jesus Christ as your Lord? Have you ever, you ever seen a, a, a store a restaurant that has a new sign in the window, and it says, under new management. Under new management. That's what it means to become a follower of Jesus Christ. You, you, you wear a new sign that says, I am under new management. Jesus Christ is now the manager of my life. He is my Lord. He is my new boss. He's calling the shots. I'm not calling the shots anymore. He made me. He loves me. He knows what's best, so I'm going to follow the plan that I was put on this earth to follow. God brought you here this morning. Uh, you're here by divine appointment, and he wants you to know about this Christmas gift today. Is it possible that maybe you've just known about God without knowing him personally? You believe he exists. You know about him. You know, I, I, I know about actors and athletes, but I don't know them personally. But you and I who receive Christ, we can know him in a personal way. We can have a relationship with him, and you can too. The issue is not whether you're ever going to admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are going to say Jesus is Lord. It's a matter of when. It's either now or it's later. Why would you wait? Why would you not accept that wonderful, kind gift of love? This Christmas, you can say, I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord I want to receive him as my Savior. When Jesus Christ is, the, is your Lord, you just handle, you handle life differently. And when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling stressed, you, you can just say it out loud. Jesus is Lord. Uh, when you feel like you can't cope anymore, you say, Jesus is Lord. When you're lonely, when you're depressed, when you're uptight, when you're worried, when you're sad, when you're grieving, you simply say, uh, Jesus is Lord. I, I know he loves me, and I know he's in control, and I'm going to trust him. There on page four of your notes, you can say it when you're discouraged. You can say it when you're defeated. You can say it when you're tired. You can say it when you're fearful. Jesus is Lord. What a gift. It is the unspeakable gift. It is Jesus Christ. And that's why the birth of our Savior was such a special night. And that's why we say, 
O holy night. Let's take time both today, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day, to give thanks to God for His unspeakable gift, the greatest gift of all, the gift of His Son. There in your notes, that's why we come together. We do it collectively. We come together to sing, to celebrate, to thank, and to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. May we pray. Father, thank you for the unspeakable gift. Thank you for each one of us who had that moment in time that we were born again into your family and the Holy Spirit of God came into our soul and our spirit became alive and we went from darkness to life, from death to life, and we praise you. We praise you for this unspeakable gift. And Father, our hearts go out to those who have not yet made that decision, that commitment, who have not yet responded to your call, your wooing, your invitation. And we pray for them at this moment that they would delay no longer, but open the greatest gift of all, the gift of God, which is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You'd say, Pastor, if I died today, I know that heaven is my home. I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have the peace, I have the confidence that heaven's my home. If you have that peace and assurance, would you simply raise your hand? Would you hold it up high? I'm saved, I'm born again, I've received that gift. God bless you. You may put your hands down. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I... I think I'm saved, I'm, I hope I'm saved, but I'm not sure, I have doubts. Maybe you raised your hand and you have doubts. Oh, God has, God has given this wonderful gift, this wonderful gift of salvation. Would you not want to receive him today? I can lead you in that salvation prayer. If you would open your heart, if you would believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you'd like to pray with me today to receive this wonderful gift, I would ask you just to raise your hand for a moment. I'll see it, and we can pray together. You can pray right there in your seat. You can give your heart to Christ. Anyone at all, I'd like to do that today. Just hold your hand up high. Anyone at all, I would like to receive God's gift. I would like to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Anyone at all, would you raise your hand for just a moment? Father, give us grateful hearts to be able to express to you all that you've done for us. Father, today we pause to thank you as we consider Emmanuel, God with us. I pray now that, that our lives will never be the same, that we'll take on the characteristics of the wonderful, unspeakable gift. May you bless in this time of invitation as we come before you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just a moment, we'll stand, we'll sing a song of invitation. It is a public invitation. If you have any type of need, spiritual need, you'd like to speak to a pastor, pastor's wife, you can come out. If you want to pray here at the altar, you want to intercede for someone else or even yourself, whatever the need, to be baptized, to come become part of the church family, you come. Let's all stand together. We'll sing that chorus once again. Emmanuel, God with us. You come as we sing in that first verse. McCann has come forward. Ariana, if you'll come to the platform with your mom and dad. Uh, Frank and Kelly, faithful members here. Frank and Kelly, 
our uh, leaders and our Reformers Unanimous Ministry here every Friday night, no matter if it's a holiday, uh, they're here. Kelly is the uh, uh, secretary and Frank's the director of it. And uh, uh, Ariana has trusted Christ as her Savior, and uh, she's going to be seven in a week. Is that right? Nick? 22nd. All right. We're so happy that Ariana's been saved, met with her and her family uh, this last week, and uh, she would like to get baptized, become part of the church family. All those in favor of receiving Ariana McCann into our church family upon her baptism, let it be known with a hearty amen. 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 Ariana, we're so happy for you. You can stand, uh, sit down there in the front row. You may be seated for just a moment. As soon as the service is over, you come by and congratulate Ariana and Frank and Kelly on uh, uh, Ariana's decision to be able to uh, follow the Lord this way. If you have a bulletin, go ahead and open it up for just a moment. Some things we want to uh, be able to, uh, to share with you. We ask you to pray for our missionary of the week, Kyle and uh, Jody Charters. They're serving now in El Salvador. They actually started in Russia and as things uh, really became difficult to minister there, they went to El Salvador. Uh, thankfully, the Camilches are still able to uh, uh, minister there in, in uh, St. Petersburg. And then uh, the Christmas cheer envelopes are available. If you'd like to be able to be a blessing to someone else, the envelopes are uh, by the elevator or on the welcome desk, and you can go ahead and uh, pick up one of those and drop that in the drop box. We'd like to deliver uh, those blessings to others this week. Christmas offering. We think about uh, the wise men giving gifts to Jesus. We think about giving gifts to one another, but it is Jesus' birthday, and so I trust you'll pray about having a part in uh, ministering to others the gospel uh, through a Christmas offering. And then we want to be able to share uh, good news of uh, others that have participated. Uh, the uh, Clemens Foundation, they uh, out of their profits, they have a benevolent arm of, of their multiple organizations, and they give to uh, those who requested in uh, nonprofit settings to be a blessing to others. And uh, we uh, were the recipients of this several years ago, and that's how we have our counseling center. And uh, this year, uh, they gave a very generous gift that uh, helped out with uh, uh, the uh, playground, and there's a lot of work out there that went into that, and the Academy Auction was part of that. In the next slide, uh, they also, we took part of that gift to uh, 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 outfit our computer lab, and we rejoice in that. Kids are pretty happy about that. And then the large part of the gift is uh, going to be going to a new shuttle, our old shuttle. It's hard to imagine uh, that it's old, but I, I remember. Uh, we, that was with Pastor Abby, wasn't it? And so uh, Pastor Colton wasn't on staff, and so I sent him along as a deacon to make sure that they didn't spend too much money, and they came back with a new shuttle. And uh, so that was, that was uh, almost two decades ago, and that thing now has well over 100,000 miles. And so uh, uh, we like to be able to make sure that our kids and our seniors don't get stressed branded, and so through that uh, generous gift. If you've never been to that website, I suggest you take a few moments to go to it, and you'll see, I think it's under the history page, that their company uh, ethics exist because of their faith and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what a blessing in our time uh, to see a uh, very large uh, corporation uh, that started some hundred years ago uh, with, I guess it was a grandma uh, our grandpa and a couple of brothers, and now to this day uh, still have a public uh, a commitment to the Lord. And so I uh, want to share that with you uh, of their, their uh, blessing to us as, as a ministry. Offering envelopes are in the hallway. If you uh, would like to pick that up, please. Again, use the 2015 envelopes up through um, next Sunday. And then the new envelopes in 2016, uh, since there are different numbers on that, please don't, uh, uh, don't, don't mix 2015, 2016. If you give online, you'll not have envelopes, but you can request them. If you don't have envelopes, but would like to request them, there, there is a, a, uh, a sheet up there uh, to be able to, to go ahead and sign up, and we'll, uh, Ellen will be glad to, to get you those. Also, if you have a gift you want to give for uh, the uh, taxable year, I believe the office is open until 3 o'clock on New Year's Eve. And uh, so up until that time, uh, Ellen can record it for, uh, for 2015. 
Nursery workers are needed for Christmas Eve. Uh, the times are earlier this year, 4 o'clock and 5.30, uh, responding to requests uh, by you for that. And so 4 o'clock and 5.30. So if you like to uh, give a gift of service to others, uh, we have a lot of visitors that come out. Very important that we have uh, that nursery. So you could come to one service and stop by the nursery to be able to uh, sign up for that. Or you can use the connection card uh, to be able to be a part of that. New church directories are available uh, in the bookstore. A couple of prayer requests for you. Frank Imbo, recovering from major heart surgery. Now home, Terry Lush, recovering from major colon surgery. The tumor was cancerous, and so if you pray for wisdom and treatment, Esther Mundell has a return of cancer in her esophagus. We pray for wisdom and treatment for her. John Evans and Donna Mangle's brother, Kenny, just passed away. There'll be, uh, he was a saved man. There'll be a service Monday, uh, 9 a.m. visitation, 1030 service at the Cattermole Phoenixville uh, uh, funeral home. Celebrate with family is tonight. If you prefer men to wear a sweater versus a tie tonight, feel free to. It'd be a dressy casual. We just, we've had a lot of outreaches, and this is a time just to be able to celebrate what God has, has done uh, for us. Christmas cards uh, can be picked up from the table here in the uh, uh, Family Life Center hallway. Be sure to stop by. If you're a regular tender or member, uh, someone wanted to share a card with you, appreciate uh, Coopers and all that they did out there. Secret Sister Revealing, sign up for 2016 uh, meeting in the library Sunday, January the 3rd at uh, 5 o'clock. And uh, please go ahead and sign up. Uh, there's a sign up, uh, I believe. I believe it might be by the, by the elevator, but a Secret Sister sign up if you'd like to be a part of that. And then we uh, were able to mail out our Christmas card. If you did not receive one, then you're not in the database. And, and please stop by uh, the welcome desk, and you can have a, a pick up one of the Christmas cards of our family. Okay, I think that's all we have except for one more special event. Brandon, if you'll come at this time, when you see a rose, you know God has blessed us with a new baby, and we're going to go... We're going to go blue ribbon here. And so we had two of our staff members, Lawrence, Branda, Brandon, have uh, new babies. Look at that. I, I, I think his youth directorship has just increased exponentially now that he's a dad. Come on in here and tell us who do you have with you. This is Kaysen Gregory, and Kaysen was born last Friday at 4.58 uh, in the evening, and he was 6 pounds, 15 ounces, and 20 inches long. Wonderful. Look at all the hair he has. He does have a lot of hair. And uh, Case and Gregory. You liking that name? Yeah. You love that name? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are so happy Thank for you. you, and we rejoice, and Eileen's doing well? She's doing well, yes. Oh, good. Well, congratulations, and may I present that, ro you can present that rose to your lovely wife, right. and we rejoice with you. God Thank bless you. you, Brandon. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we'll have a hymn as we prepare for baptism. 287, 287, look to the Lamb of God. We'll sing just a couple verses. You may remain seated. If you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem you.
This is Grace Leong. Grace, she's a little on the short side, but she is seven. So Grace, let me put you up there so you can see everybody. And she was already sharing her faith uh, with her unsafe family back at Thanksgiving. We praise the Lord that even at her age, uh, she's telling others that Jesus Christ is in her heart and that you need to ask Jesus to be your Savior. So she's being a good witness to her cousin and family. Grace, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in obedience to the Great Commission, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen, Grace. God bless you. <laughs> I couldn't see him behind a Christmas tree over there, so I get the nod here. So how about if we stand and be dismissed with a word of prayer? Again, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, Lord, and we have the privilege of having your word uh, preached and sung and meditated on. Lord, I am thankful for the precious gift of our salvation, Lord, because as Pastor pointed out this morning, it's personal for every one of us. It's practical and useful for everything that we need in life and practice, Lord. It's, it's priceless and it's forever. No one can take it away. Thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that you continue to be with us through the service today, Lord. And as we go to Sunday school and back this evening, Lord, I pray that you watch over all that we say and do. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.